Today marks two years since the world lost basketball legend Kobe Bryant. A new book is telling the story of Kobe's younger years from growing up in Italy to his high school days at Lower Marion in Philadelphia. Joining us to tell us more about the book, The Rise, Kobe Bryant and the Pursuit of Immortality is the author and sports columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer, Mike Sealski. Mike, uh, good morning and welcome. Frank, Elena, thank you for having me. You bet. So I understand you, you focus on, on Kobe's younger life, and, and you got access to some never-been-heard-before interviews. Tell me about that. Sure, yeah. I wanted to write Kobe's origin story. Um, and to that end, in doing the research for the book and focusing on basically the first 17, 18 years of his life here in the Philadelphia area, uh, I was able to get my hands on interviews uh, that Kobe had done with a friend and confidant of his named Jeremy Treatman. The two of them were working on a book together when Kobe was making the transition from high school to the Lakers. Uh, the book never got written, just bad timing, but Jeremy gave me the tapes. And mm. on those tapes, you could hear Kobe talking about the first time he met Magic Johnson, uh, the first time he met and interacted with Michael Jordan, uh, his relationships with his parents, what it was like to win the state championship as a high school kid, uh, what it was like to be drafted by the, you know, into the NBA and traded to the Lakers. All the things that we know him for now, um, it's his voice as a 17, 18, 19 year old kid. That's pretty incredible. And we actually have a clip of one of those interviews. Let's take a listen. Uh, it's always been my dream, my goal to play professional basketball. And I've always loved the game. Uh, I love the smell of the leather, uh, the hardwood, the concrete on the playground, switch to the net. And I just, I just really love the game. I don't know where that came from, but it's just always been there. And Mike, what do you think these interviews reveal about Kobe Bryant that maybe we didn't know before? Well, I think they show two things, Elaine. And number one, they show something that we kind of new but needed reaffirmed, which is just how committed he was, particularly at an early age, uh, to being the greatest basketball player in the world. Um, you know, he had a, a very strong sense of what he wanted to do and how he wanted to do it, even when he was in grade school or, you know, the earliest days of high school. The other thing is um, the tapes reveal some of his vulnerabilities, you know, him dealing with fame uh, as he goes through his high school career, the idea that he took Brandy to the senior prom and his classmates resent him for that. And how does he handle that? How does he handle dealing with the attention that's coming his way as his basketball career progresses in high school and he realizes that he's going to become uh, an NBA player? Um, those two sides of him were really fascinating to explore both in the tapes and in the book. Kobe uh, spoke Italian fluently. He moved to Italy when he was six years old. How did that part of his life contribute to his being a basketball star? Well, he got a first hand look at professional players. Now, they weren't NBA players, but his dad was playing in Italy and Kobe would go to all the practices and all the games. So he's watching these professionals and seeing how they move their feet and how they shoot the ball and how they play. And it's kind of learning by osmosis. And then once he and the family come back to Lower Marion, I think his experience in Italy uh, made him more open to people. Um, you know, whether you were black, whether you were white, whether you loved basketball, whether you weren't interested in basketball, uh, Kobe was kind of open to you and learning about you. He was really a searcher. And a lot of the book gets into those kinds of quests for him away from basketball, whether it was interacting with kids in his English class or other kids who like rap music or whatever the case may be. Um, that experience in Italy kind of rounded him out, I think. Mm. It's fascinating. So the Bryans, they moved back to the States and Kobe attended Lower Marion High School in Philadelphia. Tell us more, Mike, about these days when he was in high school playing basketball at Lower Marion. Well, he kind of falls out of the sky in the fall of 1991. Um, the family moves back to the area. Uh, he hasn't grown up in the way the other black kids in the community have. He hasn't grown up in the way most of the white kids in the community have. He doesn't know what fashion is cool. He doesn't know what music is cool. He, didn't, he doesn't know what TV shows everybody's watching. As he and his sisters pass each other in the school hallways, they're speaking to each other in Italian because it's what they're comfortable with and it's, and it's their own little language and nobody else can understand what they're saying. And so as he goes along in his, in his life as a teenager, basketball is his way in socially. And then he's grappling with all the other stuff that teenagers of that time and that age are dealing with. You know, how do I make friends? Where do girls factor into my life? But all the while, 
he's pointed toward this goal of being a great basketball player. You write about the time that Kobe met Michael Jordan. Um, what did those two guys, tell me about the meeting, and then what did the two guys have in common? Well, they met before a Sixers-Bulls game at the Spectrum in 1996. And as they're meeting, Jordan actually recognizes Kobe. Kobe's profile is high enough at that time that Jordan recognizes him in the, in the visiting locker room. And they end up talking for a bit, and, and Jordan lobbies Kobe to go to the University of North Carolina, just like Michael did. And Kobe actually reveals on these tapes that he would never consider doing that because as much as he admired Michael, uh, he wouldn't have had his own identity and been his own man at North Carolina by following him there. One of the other interesting things I uncovered is that they had something else in common. Kobe played baseball as well, just as Michael Jordan did. In eighth grade, Kobe was on uh, his school's basketball team, uh, baseball team, his middle school's baseball team, and I dug up a photograph of his yearbook. Um, he's the only kid in the photo who's not wearing a glove or hat or holding a bat. Mm. Wow. Once again, the book is called The Rise, Kobe Bryant and the Pursuit of Immortality. For more information, you can go to the riseofkobebook.com. Mike, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Thanks, Mike.